Yes, thank you so much for giving me the floor. Um, I'm very happy to present and share my ideas about EU subsidies. My approach not only today is that I have uh, two hats on me. Maybe you can see it. The one hat is the consul and the other hat is the lawyer. So I will ask you to focus on a highly pragmatic approach, which is about um, the motto. The motto would be make a subsidy cocktail, make it big and do it now. So the three elements going creative with that cocktail and to think about cross-border effects to the other neighboring countries, that's my point. The time is now, why? First of all, we should uh, start defining what kind of subsidies I'm talking about. So I wanted to point out that you have in, in general regional aid and the regional aid is somehow limited. This is the, the aid which is important, thank you, for the uh, new investments, either you start with a greenfield investment or you're focused uh, on an amendment, new modern machinery, new techniques, a new economic activity. So this is important when you have greenfield investments or you change something. In addition to that, you have aid for R&D, aid for training and education. And the smart element having all of them is that the regional aid is somehow limited. So that there are EU rules which follow uh, the principle that everything should be limited. Let us guess 25%. But the lovely additional state aid elements like R&D, training, education will not be counted into these 25%. So therefore we have uh, a kind of top up for the regional. Uh, state aid. Please switch to the next slide. After having said what kind of subsidies we have, we will now move on to the question how we foster investment in the Baltic region. How do we make it more likely that something happens in the region? How can we get organized in a sense that we attract foreign investments? This is the major question, and I was grateful for listening to the conference because there are several elements, but what is the appetizer to finally start investing in, into the Baltic Sea region? You need, first of all, um, think about joint venture options and uh, PPPs, public-private partnerships. I quite often realized, after having spent uh, more than 20 years in Brussels, that Investors start with acquiring property, not thinking about the infrastructure. And then the member state is somehow under pressure to fulfill all criteria and especially the, the interest of the new investment. So it would be more elegant and more efficient upfront signing a letter of intent or memorandum of understanding with the with the municipality that you have a track, you have uh, access to the motorway, that you get uh, fast access to the airport. All this should be part of a tailor-made solution. And unfortunately, most often they start by just acting and investing. And later on, um, the public um, authority, so the municipality has not been asked upfront how to get involved uh, most efficiently because the municipality can by itself uh, apply for subsidies and then this is not part of the investment from the investor side. So the approach here is that you focus on investment plus joint ventures, industry plus infrastructure, and the key word is clustering effects. So um, it is most in interesting having more than the investment. For example, that you add on a new plant, you have a smart R&D uh, unit, you have uh, more elements than only being focused on the new industry you are about to establish. For example, in Hungary, uh, we had a product where it was agriculture plus R&D plus SME offices plus uh, housing for students plus training plus lecture plus university. This is my cocktail approach that you have more than the simple investment. 
and you have more likely more effects on the region. And this is why you could also with the neighboring states try to join forces and get organized in the sense that you have a bigger stimulus on the region. Um, could you kindly switch to the next um, slide? After having discussed what kind of subsidies we have, why it is important to and how to foster the investment, the next question is the power of now. Why do I seriously believe that now is the moment? It is now because the um, regional guidelines have been extended due to the COVID uh, crisis. Uh, the regional aid map from 2014 to 20 ended normally at the end of 2020 and now has been extended for another year. Why is that important? Um, over the years, each time we have a new uh, regional um, state aid map, the state intensity goes down. It was Eastern Germany, then it was Poland, then it were the new member states. So the bigger the European Union is, the state aid level goes down. And therefore we, for the time being, have another year where we can um, invest with the higher rates of the state aid intensity. So the time is now. And this is also important talking about the national budgets. In Germany, for example, we have the, the federal budget comes out in March and, and then, the, um, then the German Bundesländer in April. And end of August, September, there's already a crisis so that they have to freeze projects. They have no money. The cash box is empty. And partially, similarly, the situation is in the uh, Baltic region as well. So that you should know, due to the COVID crisis, for example, Hungary has retroactively received from the European Union money. They didn't apply correctly in the, uh, previously. So they have 5.1 billion and now 900 million for COVID. So they have 6 billion in their pockets. So this is why they have attracted recently lots of investments. But I think now being more focused on our region, on the Baltic Sea region, I would like to ask you kindly to join forces to use that money, which is similar uh, in the budget of our countries here. So the last point is um, we are now, uh, I am at the office, but most of, of my colleagues are at home and the home office situation has led to, I thought, friction. No one is interested in business and connecting um, investments with other cultural or educational interests. No, on the contrary, everything is more efficient for the time being. I have seen so far that in the government of Lithuania and other member states and within the European Commission, the handling of, of cases is much more efficient and they are more willing to easily issue decision-making processes. So instead of uh, previous years, we, we had to hand over tons of accountants documents for the, the project Things are quite nice at the moment in the sense that you can most efficiently ask requests for that uh, state aid and get it quite uh, quickly. So um, the, the time is now, once again, without being, being redundant. And uh, my last comment is that if you put everything together, I was talking about. So think about highly creative, what could be organized, Where's the cocktail of different elements? And do it please now, because until the end of the year, we have money in the cash box. I would like to close with an example, for example, because everybody's looking to Brussels, where's the money? There is a dilemma. The European Union in general is trying to help. So there is a EU strategy for the Baltic Sea region which is 176 pages and um, about funding on page 33, only two pages. So you'll see 176 pages, all kinds of stories. On two pages, they say, 
It is up to the member states to decide which one to choose, which program is the relevant one. So therefore, the hope of the member states is Brussels will give us something, but Brussels is sending it back that you should stay autonomous. So for business, for starting new projects, to cooperate between the Baltic Sea region member states, it's up to you, unfortunately, to push in Brussels and to ask the civil servants within the government to accordingly legislate the national law or to do it my way. I call it the Lex Reich, uh, the, that you invent your tailor-made solution. We have the project and then we do the cocktail with lots of elements and we do not focus on what has been legislated, issued so far on the national level. Last example, uh, Benchela, one of my clients, automotive sector, uh, there was a carbon initiative from the European Union. And then I said, hey, Benchela, there's carbon money within the European Union. So we acquired Fisher Ski. It's not about ski and the automotive uh, sector, but now they do, at this plant, they do carbon made uh, Porsche um, doors and ODTT spoiler. So we had a deal in Austria for a German company. I asked a French company to join for the R&D. And then we had within one deal, um, carbon EU uh, subsidies, a takeover of a new plant, new engineers, state aid for engineers, for education, for training. And this is what I would like to see in the Baltic region more and more.